Welcome to Modern Medicine. I'm Dr. Dave Moylan, the medical director of the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute, and I'm coming to you from the Commonwealth Health Cyberknife, which is located at the Cancer Center in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. And I'm so pleased to introduce our guest, Dr. John Lamont. And John, we've been colleagues now for pushing 10 years, I guess. Absolutely. But you're still a stranger to me. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about your uh, background? Where did you go to medical school? Your training in this discipline of radiation oncology? Well, I've, uh, well I graduated from Hahnemann back uh, over 25 years ago now, yeah. and then went to University of Wisconsin in Madison for four years. Spent a couple years in Illinois uh, doing some radio surgery with other pieces of equipment, not as good as the CyberKnife. Yeah. I've been back in the area for 18 years in the Philadelphia area. Um, we opened up Philadelphia CyberKnife 10 years ago, and so I have 10 years of experience doing CyberKnife radio surgery, which we'll talk about. And then over the past year and a half, I've been here at Pottstown preparing the way for the CyberKnife, which opened in December of last year. Wonderful. Uh, John, our paths crossed probably about 10 years ago with the opening of the Philadelphia CyberKnife. And again, right. you are a native uh, Pennsylvanian and right. uh, southeast Pennsylvania. And you uh, hooked up with our uh, esteemed colleague, Dr. Luther Brady. Can you tell me a little bit about that sure. interaction with this wonderful right. uh, senior physician? Well, it was Dr. Brady, who's one of the founding fathers of radiation oncology, what we do, uh, who uh, had the idea of bringing a cyber knife to the area in Philadelphia. And so he invited me to use the facility and having my radio surgery experience I really welcomed the opportunity to get doing more radio surgery. In the past as you know Dave we only used focused radiation or radio surgery in the brain and what the CyberKnife is able to do is to bring that technology that ability to pinpoint precision to the rest of the body as well. Well um, I looked at the map before I came down here to Pottstown and this will be a great boon to our patients in Schuylkill County right. and the other surrounding areas uh, because the trip from Simon Kramer Cancer Institute to uh, Philadelphia CyberKnife, 91 miles, this is only 54 miles. So that's going to save some time in getting the patients back and forth. Right. I mean, over time when we opened Philadelphia CyberKnife, we used to get patients from other countries coming yep. to us. We were the only 25th CyberKnife in the world. Uh, so now these days there are more cyber knives, but um, more and more there are other pieces of equipment that try to do what the cyber knife can. Yes. Uh, but we still enjoy a, a, some superiority technologically, I think. When I looked, at, you know, where to send patients, I looked at the uh, dosimetry. This is so much more precise than what we can obtain with the linear accelerator, and uh, it, it's certainly comparable to the gamma knife. Uh, but that can only treat head lesions. And again, uh, I was wondering if you could uh, show us this beast right. and uh, tell us a little bit about well, its operation. Well, most of the beast is familiar to a lot of people that look at commercials for robots. It's, most of it's a robot. And attached to the robot is a smaller linear accelerator than we use at, at most facilities. So the linear accelerator is just a little over 300 pounds at the at the end of the Versus three robot. tons probably Usually, for a regular yeah, most. accelerator. And because of that, we can be very precise about how we're aiming this machine. We can aim within less than a millimeter precision, aimed at a target inside the body. If the target moves, we can actually move with the target. And so those are some of the unique things about our cyber knife and why uh, we think it's really the best technology around. Could you tell us a little bit about the history? I understand this was the brainchild of a neurosurgeon. Yeah, it was meant to replace another machine called the Gamma Knife. Um, the Gamma Knife is something somewhat invasive where you have to screw something against the head to be able to provide enough precision to aim at something in the brain and with one treatment give such a high dose that you can kill off a tumor in the brain. And because of that it was called, it had a surgery name, knife at the end, but you can see there's no knife involved with the cyber knife or with the gamma knife. The advantage of the cyber knife is there's, it's not invasive at all. Yes. So patient just lays there and gets the uh, treatment. It can take up to an hour or maybe a little bit more to get a single treatment. 
but we do between one and five treatments depending upon which uh, tumor we're treating in the body. I uh, noticed that the team in Philadelphia certainly puts my patients at ease and yeah. because it takes 45 minutes an hour, they counsel the patients, bring some of your favorite music and yeah, that really sure. relaxes the, yeah. the patients. I think that's helpful. Also, we have a table that's got a pad on it, unlike most radiation equipment. So it's far more comfortable for patients to spend an hour on the table. So usually it's a, a very positive experience for the patient, something they can tolerate quite easily. Well, and then the trip to Philadelphia or now to Pottstown, right. uh, that's a little daunting versus, you know, a 15 minute trip within the county. But uh, tell us about how many treatments are typically given. So we treat different areas of the body. So for instance, for tumors in the brain, we may only do one treatment. And uh, for other areas of the body, such as cancers in the lung, liver, pancreas, prostate, we do between three and five treatments. Yes, and uh, is there any pain associated with this? No, there's no pain at all. Yeah. Um, so that's a very unique advantage of this type of treatment. Now, I know you referred to the gamma knife again, uh, a misnomer. There's no really knife with the gamma either. But uh, there was some at least local anesthesia to uh, put the head pins in. Is there any requirement for anesthesia with the cyber knife? No, no. In fact, most of our patients don't need any medicine for pain or for sedation at all. They just simply lay there and get their treatment. Instead of using something that, that fixes against the skull and is screwed against the skull, we don't use that technology. Instead, we make a mask that you can see and breathe through, but it keeps the patient nice and still for their treatment. You mentioned some of the areas of the body that you typically treat. Are there any uh, types of cancer that don't, don't work here for the cyber Oh, knife. absolutely. So what we're best with the cyber knife for small tumors, they're very well localized. So there's some tumors that unfortunately are in more than one area of the body. And for those tumors, generally we're not using the cyber knife. Uh, but we're treating small, well-defined tumors. They tend to be an inch or two or smaller in size. Well, at this point, I'd like to break for a commercial. Sure. And then when we come back, we'll explore other applications for this wonderful piece of technology. Welcome back to Modern Medicine. I'm Dr. Dave Moylan, and we're on location in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. We're here at Commonwealth Health CyberKnife. And with me as our guest is Dr. John Lamont, who's the medical director here. We've been working together for about 10 years and I hope to continue that relationship here in Pottstown. But we have some schematics here that explain how uh, radiation is delivered right. with the cyber knife. Right, so what we have here is a patient who has unfortunately developed a lung cancer. And so these are just all the same images, just different angles. But here we have the patient's face, we've taken away the skin. And so we're looking at the patient and the tumor is located here in this purple. Uh, so the tumor can be seen in all these different images from different locations. We know that the cancer is in the right lung. And in this situation, the tumor is about an inch in size. So it's within the realm of what we think we can have a very high chance of killing off with the cyber knife. Now, John, a question. Is this, in this particular case, a, uh, a new cancer of the lung? Or is this one that might have spread from another organ of the body? In this case, this is a new cancer within the lung. We treat patients also where the cancer spread from somewhere else to a different body part. Uh, a metastasis. Lung, so a metastasis. Yeah. But in this case, the cancer started in the lung. And as you know, Dave, many of these patients, they've smoked all their lives and they may not be able to get through a surgery or they refuse a surgery. And now with the CyberKnife, we have data that the results are very comparable to surgery for patients who have what's called early stage lung cancer. So this patient doesn't have any evidence of the cancer having spread. I was gonna say this seems so localized that uh, surgeons would probably be salivating to, to remove that. Well, I, I'm not saying the surgery isn't a good option for this patient, but for whatever reason, and I forget in this case, the patient's either chosen not to get the surgery or uh, the doctors themselves thought that the surgery yeah, would be too would be high too of a risk. 
Yes, well, we've seen that in our patient population. Oh, and again, uh, I have uh, evidence that this is highly effective and uh, can kill off the cancer cells. But can you explain this schematic? We're seeing these little uh, these blue little lines. lines. They, they represent every radiation beam from the cyber knife aimed at the cancer. So you can think of it as like if you have like a little pen light in a room, the little pen light is aimed at, at a target. Well, if you had 100 pen lights at a room and you turned the light off, you held up a balloon yeah. as the target, the, the balloon would light up very brightly. Yeah. It's where all those beams intersect in the body. But what the cyber knife's able to do is hit a moving target. So as this tumor is, as the patient's breathing, the tumor's moving around in the, in the lung. And so the cyber knife, because it's a robot, is able to continue to Amazing. aim at the target. And so the tumor is here, and the area that we're treating with the cyber knife is in white. So we're intentionally trying to damage everything in that target, but nothing else. And because of that, uh, our patients have very little risk of any side effects from this treatment. Well, you had already told us there's no pain associated with it, but what are potential side effects right. related to normal right. tissue in that area? So it depends on where we're aiming at. So this case, the ribs and the chest wall are fairly close to where we're treating. We've had a few patients develop some pain, very few, but we've had some. We've had a few that have developed a fracture and then the fracture heals. That's about the worst case scenario. Very unlikely that even with patients have very poor lung function that we change their lung function very much. But we're intentionally damaging a small portion of the lung right around where the cancer is located. Now, if we were closer to another part of the body, then the side effects could be a lot different. They'll be uh, organ specific. Very organ specific. And even within the lung, if we were closer to other organs, we're further away from the chest wall, then we'd have less chance of damaging the, the uh, chest wall area or the ribs. Uh, so it depends upon which area of the body that we're aiming at. Now, Dr. Lamont, you stated that this was about two, an inch or so and its greatest dimension, two, two and a half centimeters. Typically, how many cyber knife uh, tr treatments would be given? In this case, we typically do four treatments. Four. So each one takes an hour or less. Um, and so it's a, a very painless uh, process. Patients come in. Uh, the odds of really seeing a side effect in the short run are very low. Well, how frequently are they given? Is this a once a week treatment or is it daily? How typically do you usually within, deliver it? Typically within a week or two, we're done with the three to five treatments for lung cancers. Some of the patients we see have never been treated, like this patient, and the odds of killing off a tumor this size are over 90%. Uh, so we've had very good results. We've treated, uh, between Philadelphia Cyberknife and here in Pottstown, we've treated nearly 3,000 patients. 3,000, Yeah, that's so a tremendous we're experience. We're one of the busiest centers combining the two in the country. John, before we uh, focus in on the brain, is there, are there any size limitations to the uh, lung treatment? We saw one that was an inch. Uh, what's the largest one you ever treated? Uh, well, we typically want to, for curative patients, we want to try to treat tumors that are less than two inches in size with the cyber knife. Sometimes we have to shrink a tumor, a larger one, which we can with the yeah. cyber knife. But we tend to, if we want to try to have a good chance of killing off the tumor, over a 90% chance of killing off the tumor, we try to have the tumor two inches or less in size. Well, one thing I like about your approach to medicine, it coincides with mine, quit is not in our uh, dictionary. And you and I treated one gentleman from the Pottsville area that had a nine centimeter tumor. He went on to work at uh, Pennsylvania Department of Transportation and he's still alive and well. We're at about six years, John. Yeah, but I mean, that's uh, great. That wasn't, that's I not a textbook that, approach. Gentlemen. And I think what overall more and more we're seeing, even patients that we're not curing are living now for longer periods of time, for years. And some develop spots in the brain. And before we used to have limited ways to deal with it, including potentially doing surgery. surgery. But this tumor is fairly deep in the brain and it's small. And a small tumor Can you spot point it out this size just a tiny spot, that area is only less than a quarter inch in size in the brain, we have over a 95% chance of killing it off with no side effects with one treatment. And so we think um, it depends on the circumstance, but this is a great technology to treat small tumor spots within the brain. 
Okay, we talked about side effects being related to the organs. The brain is a lot different from the lung. What kind of side effects could we anticipate in this group of patients? Well, it really depends upon the size. So these tumors that tend to go from different areas of the body to the brain, they're called metastatic lesions that go to the brain. They grow in the brain and push the normal brain away. So this tumor is all tumor there. It's not infiltrating into the brain. It's pushing the brain away. And so for a small tumor this size, the odds of having any side effects are very low. As the tumor gets bigger, maybe an inch or so or greater than the tumor, then there is a higher risk that potentially some dead tissue could form in the brain. Uh, so we try to get the tumors while they're very small and treat them accordingly. Now, uh, what we're looking at now is a metastasis from somewhere else in the body. But I often receive this question from other colleagues in medicine. Why can't we use this wonderful technology to treat a primary brain tumor, one that started there? And of course, right. the, the most vexing uh, deadly one is the glioblastoma. Why aren't we using CyberKnife for that one? Well, it's been more of a challenge because those tumors tend to infiltrate into the rest of the brain. And so we've, we've tried to use that type of technology. We've not been as successful. On occasion, after we've failed other means of treatment, sometimes we've used the CyberKnife, but usually it's when we have very little else to offer the patient a, in a that salvage situation. technique. So it's a salvage type of treatment. But it's not been very effective, and I think the reason why is because these tumors, even though they may appear to be in one area of the brain, they tend to infiltrate into other areas. John, thank you so much for this enlightening discussion. We're gonna break now for another commercial, but when you come back, I wanna to talk to you about a new exciting application of this for a much more common cancer, that is cancer of the prostate. Great. Welcome back to Modern Medicine with Doc Moylan. We're broadcasting to you from Pottstown, Pennsylvania at the Commonwealth Health CyberKnife. With us is Dr. John Lamont, Medical Director. And John, we, in the previous segments, we went over two very common applications for the CyberKnife, brain cancer and lung cancer. Right. But there, there's a revolution uh, coming about, and there's certainly a lot of buzz about using the CyberKnife to treat prostate cancer. What can you tell us about your experience? Well, we've compared uh, treating patients with only five treatments with the CyberKnife to over 40 or more treatments with our conventional radiation machines, and we came up with the equivalent results, stage for stage. Stage for stage, the same Side cure. effects the same, the same yep. chance of cure. And how many patients have you treated, say, in Philadelphia and now here in Pottstown? Over 300. That's an incredible experience. And it parallels the experience of other places in the country as well. So it's really exciting. Well, I have to tell you the story, which you may already know. One of my classmates from Malvern Prep School in uh, suburban Philadelphia called me up. He's a Philadelphia lawyer. And he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. It was localized. It had a Gleason score of seven. So there was some, it was something we didn't want to just watch watchful waiting being one of the options. And he uh, went all over the East Coast and he decided on CyberKnife with one of your colleagues in Philadelphia. Right. He had five treatments over about a 10 day period. I remember. Very few side effects, sure. which uh, contrasts with our external beam experience. And he's doing well now, uh, yeah. probably a year and a half out. Well, a lot of the patients that we've treated have sought us out yeah. because they've looked through the internet and uh, the results have been that great. Yeah. What kind of side effects might they expect? Well, it's where we aim at. So the prostate gland, the tube that goes right from the bladder, it goes right through the prostate gland to get to the penis. So the urethra can get irritated when we radiate the prostate gland. And so the most common side effect is men urinate more frequently and may have some burning. Do you uh, have an experience with any medication that kind of ease some of those symptoms during the cyber knife or regular external radiation? Well, since we're irritating or inflaming yeah. that area, commonly we use an anti-inflammatory, such as the leave, mm -hmm. twice a day. Uh, we may use Flomax, which is another medication yeah. that's commonly used We've for men. We've had very good results with so that. So those are the two most common medications that we use. We tend not to need anything more than those two. Yeah. Now, I know there's also a philosophical difference on how much tissue to uh, treat 
for prostate cancer. I happen to believe in, uh, in many occasions treating the lymph glands around there, which probably wouldn't be possible with the cyber knife. But is there any way you can combine the best of both worlds, external beam using uh, intensity modulated radiation and this uh, machine? Oh, absolutely. In fact, there's, um, there's some data uh, looking at Canada where we're able to escalate our dose over what we can do just with uh, IMRT alone and the results appear to be better. So combining IMRT with with only three CyberKnife treatments three instead of five treatments. We'll, we'll is be a talking very good about option. that in some of our patients of from Schuylkill County. Sure. Uh, the other thought I had was breast cancer. That traditionally, because of the movement of the breast, that really wasn't a site that could benefit from this. But there's some newer devices that can be implanted. Do you have any experience with that? Uh, we're just beginning our experience. Uh, so at Philadelphia CyberKnife, we've treated uh, over five patients with a partial breast CyberKnife protocol. So they've been very select patients yes. with early stage breast cancer. And for those patients, uh, so far, our preliminary results since we've started in February echoes what uh, Georgetown Hospital has seen as well. Patients have tolerated those five treatments well. And so it could be another option for women with yeah, breast cancer. Wonderful also. And we have that protocol open here at Pottstown okay. as well. Now, John, um, would a person who would like to investigate this modality need to come down here to Philadelphia or Pottstown? Well, you know the answer, Dave, because you and I regularly talk on the phone. Yeah. We review cases all the time. And so, no, we don't want to waste anybody's time. We want to make sure that we're treating the appropriate patients. Yeah. And, and certainly you and I talk probably on a weekly basis about a variety of different patients. Well, and also with your wonderful physics team. And I'd like to emphasize that this is not a startup operation here in Pottstown. You're just taking the 10 years of experience and now applying to people closer to their home. Can oh, you comment absolutely. on that? Well, we, you know, in my humble opinion, we have one of the world's greatest physics teams. And so we have one of the uh, Dr. Yang is really one of the world's leaders in, uh, in physics, in, in cyber knife radio surgery. And he's a nice guy also. He's a great guy, but we have a great team yeah. around him as well of therapists and other physicists that, that really make it uh, a great experience overall well, for patients. John, I can't thank you enough for sharing your expertise oh, with our, pleasure. our uh, viewers. And Thanks for having to, me. I hope to have you again. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.